Okay, stars, hello, this is Luminous Star. Welcome to the channel, my current subscribers. Mwah. Thank you guys and girls so much for supporting me as well as keeping me motivated to keep Luminous Star channel active. If this is your first time, welcome to the Luminous Star channel. Don't forget to like and or share today's video. Check the description box below for further details to today's video. And should you become a part of our star family, welcome, welcome. Today's video, narcissistic moms attempt to shut their daughters down. So I'm gonna be going over a few points as well as a few tools for you of which you can find in the description box below. Don't forget to click the notification bell. That way every video that comes out, every vlog that comes out, as well as when I go on live, you will be the first to know. Okay, having said all that, let's get on with the rest of the video. Our family is growing. I know some of you uh, have reached out to me with congratulations, so thank you so much for that. And special shout out to you all for sharing your stories. Not only do you keep me motivated and passionate about keeping Luminous Star channel active, but you also inspire me to continue to drive forward. Since our star family is growing, this only reflects that we are thriving forward together. Today's video, point number one, there could be an arrested development in the children of narcissistic mothers due to encouraging her children to become overly dependent upon her. The effects of arrested development can range from mental to financial. So there are several ways that a child of a narcissistic parent or a custody personality parent can show that there are arrested developments, okay? Such as having a brain fog, uh, and also, as they grow older, uh, say they are teenagers, and then they grow into adulthood, young adulthood or early adulthood, uh, there can be some signs of financial issues such as chronic debt. So mothers who encourage their children to be overly dependent is a classic sign of codependency. Unfortunately, there are some moms who have either a custody personality or a narcissistic personality, they tend to do this. Um, and unfortunately, it's part of the grooming process. So as the child grows up into adolescence and then into early adulthood, then it's not very surprising to see some forms or some signs of codependency, which goes right into arrested development. Um, again, this tends to happen as the child grows into adolescence on into adulthood. They can have all types of problems from social anxiety to uh, PTSD to being in chronic debt before the age of 30. Let's move forward. Rarely is there a bottom line, whereas it pertains to the messages spoken and or unspoken which narcissistic mothers tend to deliver to her children. By adulthood, some adult children of narcissistic mothers behave codependently due to the grooming process by his or her narcissistic mom or narcissistic mother. So as I stated before, there can be all types of signs that one may notice um, as a rest, an arrested development in children who have moms who have either a custody personality or a narcissistic personality. And again, some of those signs really show up as codependent behavior. And this can take place well before the child turns 18. Though some of those signs of arrested development can be anything from uh, showing signs or symptoms of PTSD to complex PTSD. And that's just for starters. Um, there can be financial issues. So by the time that a child turns into a minor, there can be financial issues, uh, such as uh, not being able to save or being able to um, spend money wisely, or they're spending money poorly. They're not learning how to save. They're not learning how to uh, maybe even earn money. So the adolescent can be showing signs of poor financial uh, habits. Or they can be showing signs of not being able to earn money very well. Uh, because they're overly dependent on their narcissistic mom or the mom who has a custom personality because she is teaching her children how to become overly dependent 
And again, this is a signs of codependency. So by the time the child turns into a minor, um, say they're uh, 15, 16, 17, so even before they're 18, they're showing signs of poor financial habits to actually taking money from her. However, the mom who has a cussing personality or a narcissistic personality, she is again grooming her children to do this. Not saying that she is 100% responsible, yet she is influencing uh, bad uh, behavior. She's influencing some uh, very uh, negative habits such as overspending or not being able to earn money uh, very well or not valuing the dollar. They're already showing signs of a person who may actually end up going into debt well before the age of 30. Now this is setting aside him or her going to college because a lot of us already know a person who goes to college, right, they're going to be in debt. Now, now I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about uh, debt, whereas there could be uh, bad credit as a result or the FICO score is very low. The credit score is very low. The financial report or the credit report is very um, undesirable or unfavorable. So that particular child or those children who are being raised by a mom who has a cluster personality or a narcissistic personality, she again is or could be influencing this type of behavior in her children because she is teaching them how to become uh, codependent if not behaving codependently. In other words, they are overly dependent upon her and she again may influence this. There's rarely a bottom line. So there's a lot of mixed messages. You know, the mom could be uh, telling the, the one child one thing and she'll turn around and tell his or her sibling another. So that child can end up very confused. And this again can show that the child is being influenced to be overly dependent upon mom for anything from uh, making decisions uh, to uh, learning how to handle money or learning how to resolve their own issues. They turn to mom for everything and this is not very healthy. So unfortunately the mom who has a cluster personality or a narcissistic personality again more than likely she might be influencing her child or her children to become overly dependent. And all of this is under the umbrella or the guise of the grooming process in order for her to obtain the narcissistic supply. Some of us have heard of stories of um, they are 35 or 40 years old and they never left home. This is a classic example of a mom who may encourage her children to be overly dependent. Um, again, this is just an example. Some of us have known someone like this, possibly, you know, they never left home, they never moved away from home, and they never bothered to learn how to stand on their own two feet, never cared to learn. And again, this goes right back to their mom possibly influencing him or her to become overly dependent upon her. Let's move forward. The main purpose for narcissistic mothers grooming her children is to obtain or and or maintain control over them for narcissistic supply. Narcissistic mothers tend to perceive their children as property and primary narcissistic supply. Adverse effects of early exposure to diabolical tactics by mothers with a narcissistic personality is anxiety, okay, and then personality disorder. Uh, the child may end up developing an emotional illness. That child may end up suffering mental illness. They may also show signs of brain fall. The child may grow up to be a person who mismanages and misplaces his or her anger. Okay, this may happen uh, quite a bit. And sometimes they're angry and really cannot pinpoint where the anger is coming from, especially when there's a history of anger and resentment of his or her mom, as well as being uh, brokenhearted or sad over a long period of time due to a lack of deep connection with their mom. There can be emotional stress, and there can also be depression. Critical questions. Do you often change your mind about something in order to please the narcissist or plus three personality? Critical question number two. 
What evidence or facts do you have to support your thoughts and feelings concerning how you might be affecting your narcissistic mom? Third and final question, how enmeshed or disconnected from yourself do you feel whereas it pertains to your mother? Can you give a description of the disconnection? For example, when you are in a conversation with your mother, your attention wanders and you might find it difficult to remain engaged with your mother while in conversation. You might think about how she has mistreated you during the conversation. You might also begin to feel angry or sad because of the way that you perceive her treatment of you. Okay, now this is very common. That is to disconnect or to, um, or to feel that you're not a part of the conversation when you're with your mom. In other words, you kind of feel like you're having an out-of-body experience. This is called disassociation. This is part of a coping mechanism that plenty of children who are adults of narcissistic parents have. And this is a reflection of trauma. Okay, it can be due to the trauma bonding. It can be due to uh, just having a childhood trauma. So I don't want you to feel like you're the only one that has experienced this. Sometimes some people, they use disassociation as a coping mechanism due to childhood trauma or some sort of trauma. So when you're in the conversation with your mom, does your attention tend to wander off to whereas she was mistreating you or maybe it was something she said or did in the past that goes unresolved. So here it is, maybe 20 years later, you can be having a conversation about uh, anything. It'd be, it could be trivial, right, with your mom and then your mind goes back there. And then sometimes you may find it a little bit difficult to just, um, remain engaged in the conversation with your mom. But I want to say on the flip side of that, a lot of moms who have a cluster B personality or a narcissistic personality, usually they are not engaged in the relationship, in the parent-child relationship anyway, because they tend to reenact unconsciously their unresolved issues, which tends to go back into their childhood. Okay, so the mom is usually not even engaged She's not fully present in the parent-child relationship. So you can have two individuals here who are not totally present in the relationship. Okay, so it tends to go on both sides. The last question is the highlightable question because for me, this was one that during my journaling in the past, I found to be an issue. And that is to, uh, you know, disassociate. Sometimes when I was in a conversation with that person, I would just go somewhere else in my mind. I would just disconnect or, you know, again, go somewhere else. It was difficult for me to uh, continue to be engaged in the conversation because I thought about all the times, well, not all the times, but I thought about some of the shenanigans that they pulled because they did not apologize. They did not take responsibility for those. So those issues remain for me unresolved. So it's not very uncommon for adult children of narcissists to experience this. Because when you factor in a lot of the issues that go unresolved, and we're talking about over a span of years here, from that person's childhood on up until their adulthood, they may be 40 now, they may be 50 now, and there may be a lot of things that their parent, who is a narcissist or a plus personality, so there could be a lot of things that the narcissistic mom has yet to take responsibility for, yet alone, uh, apologize for so there's a lot of things that are going unresolved so again it is not uncommon for an adult child of a narcissist to sometimes just check out when it comes to or wander you know the mind wanders somewhere else uh, when they're actually in a conversation with the mom or the dad who's a narcissist or a personality but since we're talking about the moms today um, this is, again, I want to point out, this is not unusual. Again, this goes right back to a form of uh, coping mechanism, which is dissociation. I want all of my stars especially to know that this is very understandable that this would happen. This is actually a natural way to respond to what is not natural. What is not natural? That is to have a dysfunctional relationship with your mother. That is not natural because there ought to be a deep connection. We all know that this happens. What I'm saying is really by nature, there's supposed to be a deep connection between mother and child. And of course, some may debate this. 
when it comes to a deep connection between mother and child, this is something that I think most of us would think would be quite natural to occur. The adverse effects of projection by a narcissistic mom. Okay, here we go. Another video today. <laughs> okay, this one is about parents who project, narcissistic parents who project their stuff onto their children. Okay, this one is going to be a little bit uh, deep. So if you're not ready for this one, you know, you might want to go ahead and look at another one of my videos. Okay, <laughs> or come back to this one later. All right, here we go. Now, sometimes what parents, narcissistic parents do is they are in a state of resistance. In other words, they are not conscious to exactly the damage that they do to their children. Now, notice I said sometimes. Sometimes the narcissistic parents can be quite, they can be quite sadistic. So they know exactly the damage that they're doing or putting on or causing their child because they project all their stuff. So they systematically, dysfunctional family, okay, there's a whole lot of uh, various abuses that go on, sexual, mental, psychological, spiritual, yeah, it's, it's pretty dirty, it's, it's pretty ugly, it's dark, it's dirty, yeah, pretty deep stuff. So actually, narcissistic parents, they tend to look at their children or their child as property, not as a person, right? Sometimes they kind of, they're, they're a little twisted with it, and narcissistic parents see those children as extensions of themselves or many needs, right? That's what the narcissist say, okay, they're, they're an extension of me and they're, gonna, they're my property, so I get to use them as I please. This is how narcissists usually, you know, narcissistic parents usually view their children. So what I really wanna say. Narcissistic moms attempt to shut their daughters down. Narcissistic moms attempt to shut their daughters down. First point. There are some mothers who either have a narcissistic personality disorder or a cluster B personality who perceive her daughters or daughters as a threat and challenge to her false self images. The moms who have a narcissistic personality disorder or a cluster B personality, they often perceive their daughters as a threat or a challenge to their false self images. The narcissistic mom's false self images can range from that of being a martyr to a saint, to a person who's a victim because she cannot seem to catch a break. Whether that is because she's had a string of romances that were bad, you know, in the past, or she currently faces an issue such as her health may be uh, deteriorating. So don't be misguided. Some moms who have a cluster of personality and some moms who have a narcissistic personality, they will use their illnesses or their poor health in order to gaslight you or to bring you or hoover you back in to a very toxic situation. Some narcissistic moms will pull a shenanigan such as using their poor health or their uh, dire situation, financial situation, right? She may be in debt. She will use that to hoover the daughter back in. Very often it works, okay? This is unfortunate. However, often it does work. Unfortunately, there are some daughters of narcissistic moms that will be hoovered back in simply because she would want to take care of her mom who has either a narcissistic personality or a cluster B personality. Now, this is not good, this is not bad, this is not right, this is not wrong. This is just stating what the reality often is. There are some narcissistic mothers and there are some mothers who have a cluster B personality, again, that will pull that shenanigan. It's not surprising to find that there are a lot of moms who have a cluster B personality or a narcissistic personality that seems to have crisis after crisis. You know, there's always an issue. If it's not her poor health, it's her finances or it's her man problems or her romances that are bad or have gone sour. It's always something. So the narcissistic mom often does pull the shenanigan in order to hoover 
the daughters back in. In order to obtain narcissistic supply and fuel while maintaining control over her daughter, narcissistic mothers will engage in some very diabolical tactics and pull many crazy making shenanigans. Unfortunately, there are some narcissistic moms and there are some moms who have a custody personality that will weave up or create some very crazy making shenanigans that can boggle the mind. Narcissistic moms usually have those crazy making shenanigans at the ready should or if the daughter chooses to go no contact. This is, I mean, this is often the case. There are some daughters who have decided to go no contact and this is when the narcissistic mom or the mothers who have clusty personalities will reach into their bag of abracadabras, okay, and pull out the crazy making shenanigan, such as, you know, the health issues or the financial issues. This is not always the case, but it does happen sometimes. So be aware of this. All of this is to obtain narcissistic supply and to maintain control over her daughter. I don't care if the daughter is 40 years old. Narcissistic moms usually do not let go of the reins of controlling their daughters, even though the daughters are fully grown. Some of those daughters have children of their own. Some of those daughters are married and have children of their own. This doesn't matter to the narcissistic mom. This doesn't matter to moms who have a cluster personality. Their main objective is to obtain narcissistic supply by any means necessary. Let's move forward. Please. There might be various complex reasons for the narcissistic mom's hidden agenda to behave as an adversary or in opposition to her daughter, other than having a personality disorder. According to my research, it is the cluster B personality that is the most complex personality disorder. Okay, so the narcissistic personality disorder, again, is very complex. This does not excuse those individuals pulling shenanigans. This does not excuse those individuals engaging in some of the most diabolical tactics that one can imagine in order to obtain narcissistic supply and to obtain fuel and to maintain control over other people. There is no excuse for that. When some narcissistic moms are behaving like adversaries, if not behaving as if they're in opposition to their daughters, this is one way that the narcissistic mom maintains fuel and control as well as the narcissistic supply. There are some moms who have a cluster B personality. There are some mothers who have a narcissistic personality that may think in order to maintain that narcissistic supply, she must maintain control over her daughter. She has several false self images ranging again from being a martyr, a saint, to a person who is a victim who seemingly cannot catch a break. In other words, there's always a crisis in her life. The narcissistic mom may have a hidden agenda, and that is to maintain control. One of the hidden agendas that the narcissistic mom may have is to maintain control over the daughter because there are things that she has not faced that she cannot control, such as her childhood, her adolescence, her early adulthood, certain things that she has faced, okay, certain challenges that she has yet to resolve. One thing that she may be thinking that she can control, and that is her daughter. This is to shield her from having to face reality. That may be one of her main hidden agendas. Let's move forward. The various attempts to shut her daughter down might prove to provide some narcissistic moms the psychological shield necessary to continue to deny her own issues, poor choices, failures, and mistakes. This may be a way for her to shield from her reality. This is not an excuse to pull shenanigans. This is not an excuse for her to continue to engage in diabolical tactics in order to narcissistically be supplied by her daughter. In other words, to maintain control over her daughter. There is absolutely no excuse for this, yet it tends to happen. There are moms who have a cluster B personality. There are moms who have a narcissistic personality who will continue to deny her own reality. 
right? One of the best ways for her to do it may be to try to control her daughter. This again provides her the psychological shield to deny her own poor choices, failures, and mistakes in her own challenges in life. All of this, again, is to obtain the narcissistic supply. Unfortunately, there are some daughters who continue to attempt to rescue their moms who have a narcissistic personality or a cluster B personality, all the while not realizing that their moms are using them as a psychological shield in order to control them. Let's move forward. Some unloved daughters of narcissistic moms, as a result, often suffer emotionally, financially, mentally, psychologically, and spiritually. Okay, so the wounds often run deep. The narcissistic mom and the cluster B personality mom is using them as a psychological shield, maybe even an emotional shield, to protect her from the realities of her own life. There may be some things that the narcissistic mom is actually facing and doesn't want to deal with. This does not mean she has an excuse to use her daughter as an emotional or a psychological shield in order to obtain narcissistic support. This does not mean that the narcissistic mom or the cluster personality mom has any right, yet alone has any excuse to continue to control her daughter you know, by using her as a, as a psychological shield or an emotional shield because she doesn't want to deal with her own stuff. There's absolutely okay, no excuse for that. Okay, let's take a look at some of the tools. Tool number one, build a support base and work it in order to have a safe and stable place to constructively express what you have experienced. Narcissistic moms are not emotionally safe or have proven to be trustworthy. Okay, so one of the things that happens between mother and daughter is that if the mother has a cluster B personality or a narcissistic personality, the trust will be broken, all right? The daughter is not gonna continue to be able to trust her mom. Somewhere along the line, the daughter is going to learn that her mother is not trustworthy, nor is she emotionally safe. And this is because the mom has a narcissistic personality or a cluster B personality. Again, this particular personality is one of the most complex and it is also a very fixed personality. Therefore, the mom's changing, this is very slim chance to none that this is gonna happen. The daughters may become adults before they realize that their mothers who have a cluster B personality or a narcissistic personality is not emotionally safe nor are they trustworthy. This can be pretty sad, disheartening, and it may even be traumatic for some daughters. This is also why it is very important to have a support base. The support base can be a place that the daughter can go in order to constructively express what she has experienced. As a result of experiencing her mother in a particular way, she may have been traumatized. The support base can provide her a safe and stable place to constructively express what she has experienced. In one way or another, she will be expressing that she had a narcissistic mom in her life or she has a cluster B personality or a narcissistic mom in her life, okay? It could be past tense, it could be currently. The bottom line is the support base more than likely will provide her that safe and stable place that she needs in order to express what she has experienced. A destructive way to express what she has experienced would be when the daughter is suffering from depression. This is not her fault. This is just a destructive way to express. This is a deconstructive way to express what she has experienced because she's internalizing everything. So she may have some anger, which is understandable. After you know experiencing her mother in a toxic way, of course, and naturally, she's going to experience a wide range of emotions that may not be very pleasant. She needs a support base because that's going to provide her that safe and stable place that she needs in order to constructively express what she has experienced. Now, a destructive way, again, to express what she has experienced will show up in the guise of depression and misplaced anger and mismanaged anger. 
In other words, she's going to have anger issues more than likely. Now we can move on to anxiety. She may have feared her mom, okay, for a long time. That moves her right into the state of anxiety. I really want to point out that none of this is the daughter's fault. I don't care if she's 40 years of age. It is not her fault. Whatever her age is, she's simply expressing what she has experienced. It may not be constructive. Some of it probably is constructive. A constructive way to express what she has experienced is to have a support base and to build that support base and work that support base. This way she has a safe and stable environment to express what she has experienced. That those experiences may have been very toxic. So she needs to express that. It's going to come out in one way or another. Once the daughter realizes that the narcissistic mom or the mom who has a clusty personality is not emotionally safe, nor is she trustworthy, the daughter may then move into building that support base, okay, in order to express what she has experienced in a more constructive way. This way, she is not only thriving forward, but she is healing. The daughter can then realize no matter what the psychological, emotional, financial, you know, spiritual condition of her mom, she is not to fix that. She's not obligated to fix that, nor is she responsible Let's to rescue forward. her mom. Tool number two, practice self-preservation, emotional discipline, assertion, and personal boundaries. Focusing on thriving forward, healing, and maintaining your overall well-being might prove to be a real game changer for you. So practicing mindfulness. All of the elements of practicing mindfulness is practicing self-preservation, practicing emotional discipline, assertion, and personal boundaries. Once the daughter begins doing this, she can also begin to focus on her overall well-being as she thrives forward and as she heals. She's not going to be trying to rescue her mom. So her priorities will be rearranged and this will become natural to her to do. Become clear about what the mother-daughter relationship means to you and compare it to the quality of the relationship you actually have or had with your mother. Okay, so this means that the daughter will be doing some relationship inventory. So we're going to be looking at what does the mother-daughter relationship mean to us? What is the, how does that look? And then compare it to the reality. This may be very painful for some. If you take a group of women to talk about the mother-daughter relationship, you're gonna find some similarities, yet you're gonna find some differences. And that is because each and every woman has her personal definition of what the mother-daughter relationship means to her. All women don't see this the same. Believe it or not, they do not. So when you become clear about what the mother-daughter relationship means to you, and then you compare it to the actual experience you had with your mom, it is a game changer. More than likely it will be because it's going to help you to get your priorities straight as far as like working your support base. You're less likely to attempt to rescue your mom once you do this tool. More than likely you're going to realize regardless of the mistakes that your mom made, she still was responsible. Okay. More than likely you're going to find that out if you haven't already. So this, you know, moms who have a narcissistic personality, moms who have a cluster personality, they often count on their daughters wanting to rescue her in order to continue to hoover her back in, if not pull more shenanigans to get the narcissistic supply from her. So once a daughter takes off the rose colored glasses and become clear about what the mother daughter relationship means to her and compare it to how she really did experience her mom, it's more than likely going to be a game changer. More than likely, she's going to realize that she is not obligated or responsible for the emotional, if not psychological condition of her mom. It's an unrealistic expectation of a narcissistic mom to have her daughter take care of her. I don't care what the daughter's age is. It can be, the daughter can be two, the daughter can be 20, the daughter can be 30, 40, 50, you know, what have you. 
It is just an unrealistic expectation for the narcissistic mom to have of her daughter. You know, her daughter is to take care of her wholeheartedly. That means the mom is not taking responsibility for her own life. And this is simply, again, an unrealistic expectation. By taking off the rose-colored glasses and facing reality can help you to accept that as a little girl, you could not have changed or controlled the choices that your mother made concerning you. All right, this is one that's kind of tough for some daughters to this face. This is one that's a little bit tough for some uh, daughters of narcissistic moms to face. This is natural. This is understandable because we're talking about from her childhood. So if she's accustomed to experiencing her mom a particular way, you know, just because she turns 20 or 30 or what have you, this does not mean she's going to have an easy time adjusting to coming out of that. References and resources. You can find the references and resources in the description box below. I'm Luminous Star. I certainly hope everyone has enjoyed this video. Stay tuned for more vlogs and stay tuned for more videos.